Hi and welcome to this video. Uh, in this video we're going to be servicing a 2 litre Focus Sport 3 uh, state, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video, um, there is a lot of service videos out there but there's nothing I can see of really for the 2 litre. So I just wanted to do something so basically that made an adequate look, couldn't really see anything so thought it would be a helpful, not a guide but you know, something out there for someone to watch if you're thinking of either doing your own. So it's inevitable in the UK that it's going to rain, so I've just stuck the nose in, push this one back a little bit as far as I can, and then um, jacked him up, so that's all done. And I have the stuff down there, the oil, air filter, and oil filter. I'm not doing the fuel filter because I did that a few months ago when I had an issue, and the pollen filter was done service before. So that's all I need for this quick and easy service, hopefully, fingers crossed. Now I just want to reiterate, the reason I'm doing this video as well is that on this 2 litre, on the one six, it's relatively easy, it's there. But on this one, it's right under there. So on this one, you're supposed to use a special tool, which I'll cover later in this video. But I'll bring my own and I'll go over the positives and the negatives with that as, as and when we get to. So for now, say so the engine's all worn, jacked up. So let's go underneath and see if we can find the drain plug. Okay, with that giant uh, under tray now off, there's no access by the way from what I can see off without taking this off because the sump plug ends up around there somewhere, which is uh, a nice one for it, but uh, that would be a lot easier if we could have done that. So now let's have a look under here. This is the first time I've actually had a look under here from only the car. I've never taken that off before, so let's get a light under. So it looks relatively clean. No leaks, I think we're all good. So yep, the next thing is to undo that sump plug. Always a good idea to disconnect the battery as the Haynes manual always says that, so that's something we always do. This is a 21mm nut, so make sure you get your bucket underway because it is pointing down and you will get covered in oil, so let's take it out. There we go. And I've forgotten a bag. Okay, so we're going to look at that drain. There's quite a lot of oil in there, 5.7 litres if it all comes out. So while we do that, let's take it up top and do the air filter. So don't forget when you're draining the oil, <coughs> you know, take this cap off. It should help the oil drain a lot easier. This one's pretty simple, you just have a few screws, one there, one there, and one there, and I think there's one at the back. I just undo those and this lid pops off. So there's always one awkward one at the back which involves a different tool. That now comes off. Okay, and this should just lift out like so. God, this thing's actually quite big, it's huge. So it doesn't look that bad, but uh, there's a few flies and bits on there, so definitely worth changing. So that could go down there. If you do have any bits, oops, there we go. If you do have any bits in here, like I have there. It's well worth vacuuming it out, so I'm just going to do it now, get rid of that. Hope you can hear me. I've had to take the external mic off because my battery is going flat, so it's now on charge at the same time. So we'll continue nevertheless. So take your new filter, which is there, which is an S0492. I'll put all these part numbers, Bosch, in the description to make it a little bit easier. And then we can fit the new one. Okay, so it turns out that I have the wrong air filter. Now, the filter that I've got uh, apparently is the right one listed for this car, but I'll put up a photo because I haven't filmed it because the battery's going flat. Uh, it's actually about, well, it's actually a few mil too long. It's not sitting in the recess of the airbox as it should be. So if you fit the wrong one, it's not going to work properly. So you need to make sure you get the right part. So I'm going to put the old one back in for now and try and get the new one at a later date. They're easy to fit, so the main thing is we get the oil changed and 
Well, I've got a new oil in basically. So yep, yeah, going to fit the old one now, which is really annoying, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Okay, so after I wasted Judy about an hour, I uh, spoke to the guy behind the counter. It is the right part. Uh, apparently, they are designed a lot. The new ones, they are a little bit bigger. Don't know, don't ask me why, but you have to really squeeze it in there. I will go in to say I did it while I was there. I went stood next to me, felt like a bit of a tit. But yeah, that's now in, so we're all good. So we'll continue with the video. So, let's check back underneath. That's pretty much stopped dripping, so what I'll do is put the nut back in there and tighten it up. So, the nut's all torqued up, uh, the sump plug rather. So, what we're going to do now is this oil filter. Now, this is the main reason behind this video. So, let's go to the front of the engine and I will explain. Take the cover off if uh, you've not already done that. We need to take this off. So, let's see if we can get some light in there. So, I say on 1.6, the air the oil filter rather is on this side of the engine. On here, it is. Let's move this out of the way. Down there. So on here it is right in there. I don't know if you can see it, just behind those wires. So yeah, rather pain to get to. It's quite tight in there. So normally you would need a tool, which I'll put on the screen now. So because I'm doing this in a bit of a rush uh, and a bit short for time, I have made my own tool. So to get to this oil filter, what I'm going to do is take this off and take that bolt out and see if we can move this wire harness out of the way. Okay, so that's everything moved out of the way. That's the wire unplugged from there, just so it gives us more access to that. So that can now come off. Okay, so in the end I cut another tool. The spanner was just too big. So I got a 27mm uh, ring spanner like that and managed to free it off with that. So now I can bring this out by hand, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I'll get in oil everywhere. Secondly, you can do this with one hand. Ah oh dear, oil drips everywhere. <laughs> but there we go, there is the filter. So I'm just going to put the phone down and try and have a quick tidy up. Okay, so I get the brand new one, which is a nice Bosch filter, which is the same size, and a new ring to go around the cap. So I'm just going to change those over now, and this is going to get slightly oily. So yeah, I'm going to put the camera down for this. So the filter's now in, new ring around the side. This one's got oil on the top because I wanted to check it fit both sides and it wasn't one way. Uh, that's why it's got oil. But they're both exactly the same, so that's fine. This can now go back in the car. So as I'm now just tightening this back up, the downside with doing it this way and not using the actual tool is that you can't uh, torque this up to its proper um, specification. I think it's 25 newton meters. Um, with the other tool, uh, obviously you can do it. You can use a, a torque wrench. Obviously, there's no way of uh, you know doing it with that. So. A 25 is not a lot, as long as it's tight, but not overly tight, I'll say, because it's plastic. Um, it should be okay. Um, when I start the car as well, if I see any leaks, and I can turn it up. So it's a bit of a guessing game, but maybe a slight soft ugga dugger should do it. So use this now and turn this up. Obviously, for the next service, I think I will buy the proper tool. Um, and if you are in a bit of a rush, you know, it just shows that you can do it this way, but uh, it's less uh, strenuous and difficult using the correct tool. Okay, so that is now back in place. You can see it. As I, I haven't really gone at it. Um, you know, it's tight, but it's not overly tight, so that should be okay. So now I'll put the wiring harness back. Put the filler neck back in its seat. Okay, so everything's back in its place, apart from the cap. Uh, so what we need to do now is drop the car back down onto the floor, onto a level surface and start putting all the oil back in. So I've got the funnel in, um, before I drop the car, some oil in, 530. 
so I'll be able most of that put in and then I'll drop the car and see what the level reads. Okay, quick tip as well, <clears throat> uh, as this is quite high up, there's no space to you know, tip the can in, if you don't have a high jug, um, if you end up tipping this as it's full, you're going to get oil down there. So and what I do is use the lid to steady the flow of the oil. So you put the cap on, just so it's taut, tilt it, and then as you turn the cap off, you can then steady how much oil comes out. Still managed to get it everywhere. And you can put the lid back on when you want to take it away. And use the cloth to mop up anywhere that you may have spilt or overflown. So back down on the floor, I just wanted to get some oil in to begin with. Um, I'll check the dipstick in a minute. It's not on a level surface, but I just want to make sure I've got some oil in uh, just so I can start the car and move it backwards. Also when I start it this is going to push the oil all the way around the engine so the actual level on this dipstick uh, will drop. So the idea is if I can get it halfway uh, or near max then I say I can start the car safely and yeah, move it back till it's flat because I'm just on a slight incline at the moment. I say at this point as well you can put the battery 10 mils back on ready for when we get a level on the dipstick which I'll just check again now. Okay, so I don't know if you can see or not, but it's just on the minimum mark, just where the crosses are. So I'm just going to put a little bit more in. Also, it's always best not to go, uh, put too much in uh, because the oil is still dripping to the bottom. So when it eventually drips, then it will give you, you know, more of a reading. So try not to be too hasty between putting oil in and you know, reading the dipstick. Okay, so it's now reading full on the dipstick, maybe a little bit over. Uh, it's okay though. So I'm just going to reverse it now just so it's on a flat surface and then I'll check the reading again in a minute or two. Okay, so just got back and uh, up, like I said earlier from the store. Been for the drive, everything's okay, no leaks as far as I can see. I'm going to put the under tray on in a bit. Uh, well, I can be bothered because I'm quite tired now. Um, but yeah, check for any leaks. I'm going to be parking on a flat surface tonight and I'm check the other level tomorrow, make sure it's still okay. So yeah, uh, I hope this video has been awesome news. Like I say, I mainly wanted to do this because of the not being any 2 litre videos, mainly regarding the oil filter, you know, and how to get to that. I think, like I say, I have bodged this time and now I'm going to get a few comments and I should use the right tool. I will do next time, like I say, I'll buy the proper tool, but uh, say about roughly around £20. Um, it's not that expensive, yeah, if you haven't used it a few times. But yeah, it, it is worth it. Um, and obviously, yeah, I've got to keep the car wild, so... I just wanted to show as well, because I wanted to do this... Well, I had the opportunity to service it now, if I had a chance. That I could do it with, you know, the way I've done it. Um, but yeah, the proper tool is better. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed anyway, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, just to point out as well, as far as I'm aware, there's no... And a service warning light on this car and um, I've seen a few videos on how to reset it I did have a quick go and neither worked uh, if I do get an error then I will add it to the video or I will do another video afterwards and um, yeah I'll link it to this one so yep hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one